Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion of GIMP um, curves. Um, this is uh, photo color fix, color, photo color retouch, uh, part three. Uh, the first part of this uh, series was on the histogram, which is very important. The second part was on um, contrast, um, you know, variation, which uh, using curves, which was also very important. And the third part is now going to cover color, um, fixing color casts. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to go back into our curves. As I said in the last video, I do believe, but I really want to repeat, if you're using the tools that affect your picture globally, like, um, like uh, uh, brightness and contrast or hue and things of that nature or saturation or whatever, um, you're really doing yourself an injustice in a lot of photographs, a lot of situations. Um, because these, the curves allow you to affect parts of the image without affecting um, other parts of the image. So basically, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to, we've got, this was the value curve. This is what we use basically for contrast adjustment or, you know, a brightening and darkening of the uh, either the shadows, the highlights, or the mid-ranges independently. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, color casting. Um, the thing that you have to keep in mind when you're dealing um, with photographs, uh, sometimes you're in a relationship where you've got mixed lighting. Uh, even in nature, if you uh, take, for example, a lot of the shadows have a much bluer tinge than the... Um, rest of the scene because they have a different color temperature. Uh, shadow areas of an image tend to be bluer. Um, if you're in a situation where you're taking a picture of um, someone in a room where there's incandescent lighting which is definitely redder in color temperature and there's sunlight coming through a window which is definitely bluer or a much hotter color temperature, what you'll find is you'll find that some parts of the image are um, uh, redder or bluer or whatever than other parts of the image. So what you need to do is you need to deal with individual parts of the image and how you can really take that to a finer point is through selections which we covered earlier and which I in the next couple of videos I plan on teaching how to do uh, take your selections and putting them into channels which is uh, even um, more sophisticated and finer. But um, for right now, <coughs> we're going to take a look at this um, image not as a total, but we're going to take a look at the various color channels. You take, for example, here is the green channel. Now, if you'll see at the bottom here, the red channel has a different histogram than the green channel, than the blue channel. And remember, white light in an additive color model like RGB, which is uh, basically uh, what you're dealing with a mon in a monitor. If you'll remember that um, additive colors are from admitted, admitted devices, devices that emit color. And um, the subtractive model, or subtractive color model, which is CMY, um, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow, um, that comes from uh, devices that reflect light like the printed page. Um, the reason they have the K tacked onto the CMY, and they call it CMYK, is printers could not effectively achieve a black with um, the three subtractive colors alone. Remember, RGB, you add the colors together, they equal white. CMY, you subtract the colors, they equal black. Or you add the colors, excuse me, they equal black. Um, so now, we're going to take a look at this image right here um, of a um, you know a nice little lake, a nice little pond, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the green from the mid-range. So we're going to put some anchor points up here, and we're going to come up here, and we're going to drag a little bit of this color green out of here. So if you'll notice, a lot of the green was removed. Here, we're going to add green. So now the green is a little bit overbearing. So what we probably want to do 
is to settle somewhere in here for a nice tone of green. A little bit greener than it was, um, um, about where it should be. So remember, um, this in th this these um, these individual color curves uh, basically apply the same way as the uh, color curves did in our contrast lesson, and that is that this is your input. Um, uh, this x-axis represents your input. This y-axis axis, or axis or represents your output. So if you have a color here, which remember this handy little chart is going to show you how the two relate. X we have a 64. If we go over here, Y is a 64. Okay, well, close to it. Now if we move this down here on this line, now what we're going to have is we're going to have an X of a 64, 65, and here we're mapping that to a 56 as it comes across. So basically you can vary your colors in that manner. Remember, here is your highlight area, here's your shadow, and here's your mid-range. One more thing to remember, <coughs> it hurts to talk out loud. One thing to remember that is if you want to move this over to match uh, this histogram at the bottom, you can take these points and move your highlight points over. It's like adjusting your black point in, um, or your uh, your black point and your white point in uh, the histogram. So what we can do is we move those over here. You'll notice that we've lost our highlight deal detail and uh, completely because we've uh, ignored this part of the histogram. So what we can do is move this over to where it was at. And what we can do is we can probably do a little bit more experimentation here. So now what we've done is we have moved essentially our white point over. Remember, these operate with the other colors as well. So when you adjust one color, you can get away with it doing it a minor amount but uh, you might have to adjust the other, other colors to make your picture look right. Now the other thing to again keep in mind, I'm saying it again because it's important, is the less of the slope, the less contrast. The higher the slope, the greater contrast as this is a higher slope. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a more contrasty image in the green. Or, if we go over to our values, if we values affecting all colors at the same time, a higher slope gives us more contrast, less of a slope gives us less contrast. And remember, it's like a contract. Um, you've only got so much contrast available. So if you steal it from one area, or you steal it from one area to add to another. So here we're, we're, we're getting higher contrast by a steeper slope, here and here, and we're getting lower contrast by less of a slope. And that concludes uh, this section on photo, color, fix, restoration, and this is the end of part three. And I thank you very much for watching.